Natasha, one of the great mysteries of something that seems very obvious to us is why we have continuity of personality. Because all of our molecules are different and they change. And what is it about our psychological states or our brain states that give us this sense that when I'm a child or a teenager or now, I, I, I'm different in every respect, but I, I feel like the same person. How can transhumanism help us to understand the nature of the continuation of personhood? And does transhumanism and the potential that it has threaten what it means to be a person? I think that transhumanism issues forth a focus on personhood because it is our identity, our sense of self, our life in its fullest and richest aspect that we want to extend and preserve over time in living longer in the you know, advance of life extension. So in that regard, transhumanism identifies with the person and, and sets the personhood apart as not just part of society, but unique. Each person mm. is unique. Mm. Each person has a valuable life to live. And just because someone dies, you shouldn't be kicked to the curb. Mm. Let's stay alive. Let's respect every life form mm. is valuable. And I think that's a strong tenet. Okay. So that being so, one of the goals ultimately of transhumanism is the potential to upload one's consciousness, one's total persona and being into uh, a substrate that won't disintegrate and die like our bodies will. Um, do, do you think that's a, that is a worthy goal of, uh, of the human species in a transhumanistic uh, uh, future? I do think it's a worthy goal. Now, let me say first that there is no safe environment. Someone could pull the plug right, right. <laughs> on a computer. So if you say upload into a computational system, you yeah. think computer and you can pull the plug. But let's put that aside for the moment. I think it's valuable to think of backing up the brain. If our brain is where our identity lies, whether you're a dualist or you're a functionalist, let's just say for argument's sake that our memories, what makes us a person over time, the continuity aspect, is because our brain is very excellent, very smart about giving us memories and uh, holding those memories together without feeling pain, for example, but experience uh, within our memories. So it's very sharp in that sense, which ties into the olfactory sense, by yeah. the way. So it's, it's interesting that when we think about uploading, the, the main reason for uploading is not like a Hans Morvik upload for, you know, thinking about a new species, but it's more or less to back up the brain, to um, give the brain and the mind consciousness another environment if indeed the biological body no longer ceases to exist. Now, when you do that, are you backing up just the uh, memories itself as if you'd use a, a hard disk and then if something happened to your brain, you can, you can uh, uh, reboot with the external hard drive of your memories, but that is nothing of itself. Or are you saying in the very strong sense that if you upload your first person experience of, uh, of uh, the felt world will also exist? in that upload condition? I think the latter. I think it's very important to have our experiences exist along with our personhood, with our memories. It may be important, but is it possible? I think so, why? yes. Why? why do you think it's possible? I think so because of the great advances in the devices in um, user experience design, for example, taking a look at gaming, how joysticks now can feel the temperature and heart rate and the pulse. Um, so games are designed to flow with the emotion that a gamer is feeling. Sure. If you take these kinds of technologies and you run it into the future, a hundred years, a thousand years, yes. a million years, I don't know how many years, but you, when you expand the technologies, then those kinds of capabilities you see yes. in a very small way can be utilized to really upload the, the, total, the total person. Yes, I think so. Doesn't that presume, though, that you believe in a wholly materialistic form of consciousness? The consciousness is, is wholly Descri describable completely. It's exhaustively described by the physical world. It would seem so. It would seem that I'm an extreme materialist, but I'm not. Uh, I am a functionalist, to be sure, but I, I'm not black and white. I think that our perception, our intuition, our senses are essential to our being a person. But those can be described in physical Material. terms. Yes. So then you are a fully there are, there's also worlds that we don't know of. I think the chemical world is a world that is yet to be explored because if you think about the last century, we've been focusing on mechanism. We're think, thinking about the chemistry. Is in the we're thinking world. about um, 
cybernetics, we're thinking about computers and zeros and ones, but we're not paying that much attention to chemistry. If you look at the universe and astrophysics, there's a whole other world out there that is outside the computer. So I think that we only know as much as we know right now, but I think there'll be new ways, new methodologies, new protocols. But all of these are within the physical world. Not necessarily. I think the only way we can understand it right now is through materiality. Okay, but if, if, you're, if, if you would say there's anything outside of materiality, then I think that's inconsistent with a, fully, uh, a, a full capacity to upload what we call a person with that first person um, uh, se sense of subjectivity. Not if the devices that we're using can pick up the, the rhythm and patterns, let's just call them patterns, of um, life, of energy and matter outside a computational system. Well, you, you can be outside a computational system, but the question is, are you outside of the material world in terms of the, 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 the pure physics? I think that it's hard to say um, how to define it or how to describe it because we, in the physical material right, world, speak right, in physical right, material terms. Right. So we don't have the language or the terminology or the abilities to determine it and argue it in ways that are outside materialism. Mm -hmm. Unless we get into mystics and, and spirituality and, and the depths there. Uh, so then the question would become, is it possible to upload someone outside a computational system or material world um, through, you know, different quantum mechanics and, and other aspects of, of All right, I'll give you, stuff. I'll give you for the moment that you will be able to do this, whether wholly materialistic or with some other mm -hmm. kind of technology that can access different things. If you can do it once, you can do it twice. And you can do it multiple times. So what, what happens to your individual sense of, I, I know I'm here and I have this experience, I see you're very prettily dressed in black and all that. Uh, what, what happens to that if I'm uploaded and, I, and, and there are 10 of those around? Where is my individual first person sense? Are those completely different uh, uh, entities, like, like a, a, an identical twin of mine? If they are, that's not me, I'm not being uploaded. You're, you're using me to clone. There's a huge difference between a clone and an upload of me. Huge difference. I look at it this way. A clone is your twin. It's your identical twin. An upload doesn't have to be a duplicate of yourself or a replica. Um, in my future body design, Primo Post, um, posthuman, I take a look at the, in the physical world, being a router between different types of worlds or environments, virtual, synthetic, artificial, chemical, whatever, so that in the physical world it would upload and download through that routing system, being a physical body, but go into spaces that are not in this physical world. Okay, and let me say this, that the idea of cloning, so many people are hooked on cloning. What are we going to do when we clone ourselves? Is it still you? Is it, you know, someone else? What is, of course, it's someone different, and you acknowledge right. that, and, and your level of insight on that is, is spot on. It's a twin. It's an identical twin until it you know, starts building on its own more and more its own uniqueness. However, if you were to back up the brain, it's not because you want to clone yourself or have multiple right. universes of you know, multiplicity all over right. the place of yourself. It's because you want to stay alive. Right. And that's the transhuman scope. Now, there's so many different theories on uploading and downloading and sideloading and whatnot. But for transhumanism, it's to stay alive and to protect your sense of unity, the continuity of your person, for example.